Guys, ladies and gentlemen, check Mary's play, Spyro the Dragon, part 5. We are here in the Dreamweaver's world. This is the fifth world in the game. And one of the... I, I won't say harder, but more challenging. Love, uh, home worlds and levels in the game. This uh, this area definitely has some uh, challenging ones. I, I wouldn't say they are, they're hard, but, but they do require a lot of... Uh, uh, thought while going in, while going in into the levels and everything. But you can see uh, here there is someone shooting and making the these little creatures bigger and smaller of uh, these metal uh, plated ones, where we, you know obviously you're not going to be able to hurt them while they're while they're big. So you do have to wait for them to become small again. And I think I missed some treasure treasure back there, but. Uh, I can't go around there just yet. Uh, so, you know, the the same rules apply. The little guys, you can charge or flame, but the big guys, you can only flame, so you do want to keep that in mind. But all you got to do is just come up here, and then you can see one of these little guys who is shooting this cannon. Uh, he, is the, uh, he is the one that is making the, the other creatures big and small. And so, and you can also use this as well. He cannot hit you with this beam. It does not affect you in any way, so you don't have to worry about that. No, but this acts just like the cannons in, uh, from Peacekeepers. You just, uh, you can move it around, you know, you get on the side of it in the back and then just move it around and then you just, uh, flame it to shoot. And that's the only way you can make those two, uh, creatures become small because there's no other way to, there's no other way to do it in the game. Hello, Spyro. Nicely done. I'll be done when I've toasted that nasty Nork. Alright, so, uh... So there's, there should be another dragon around here that I may have missed, but I don't guess so. That gives a little bit more information about what we're, what we're supposed to be doing, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so once you get through the, once you get through that first section, or, you know, get through the level, or I guess through the main area over here and climb up and get get to the uh, can the guy who's shooting the cannon is it actually pretty easy to you just have to go through and find find these hidden no well, I guess these side sections are not really hidden but they're not you know they're not quite quite, quite right out in the open and you see that's a that's a pool I'll let this dragon explain uh, to you what the pools do the fools you see in this world are invincible but that does not mean they shouldn't be attacked sounds all right to me I thought we gave a little bit better explanation, but uh, so what you have to do to the fools is you can either flame them or charge them. They are fast, so it's actually uh, more it, well, sorry, it's more efficient if you just go ahead and flame them because usually they will fly around, uh, they'll run around a lot and usually get away from you. Now all the fools are tied to a uh, usually to a section like that where a, a platform or something or something like that will. Uh, will be, and you have to use the fools to raise and lower different platforms. It depends on the level, on, on the level, but usually that's what their main focus is. But you can see this is how the rest of the world uh, gets. You know, this is how you can get back to this section in case you missed anything. And since we did miss something, uh, we may have been able to get back to there with a cannon. I usually don't. I usually uh, continue to go around the entire level, and then I'll come back over here and clear this out. Well, once I once I get done uh, with you know making the circle around the the outer I, I guess the outer edge of the level or of the, of the home world, and so we're going to clear this out first. You do want to uh, look around for the the treasure that uh, that's hidden around here, you know, because there are a lot of side sections like this where treasure can be hidden at, and also upper sections. That you always want to be looking out for treasure for. Welcome to the Dream Weavers, young one. While chasing nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. So I guess they expected you to go this way first if you uh, if you wanted to, because of that the dragon's placement. But it doesn't seem very efficient to uh, have to fly back over here for no reason. Just uh, just for a, you know, just just to go up through here, but I guess you don't have to go up through here until later on, until later on in the game. 
or uh, later on in the level unless you wanted to uh, just clear out this section first or if you didn't if you didn't worry it you wouldn't have a reason to usually you wouldn't have a reason to come up to come up through here unless you wanted to uh, unless you wanted to go ahead go ahead and clear out the the home world for here or if you just liked the flights and you wanted to do the flight first, this is the uh, icy flight. This is the flight for this uh, for this for this particular uh, home world. And you see what the fools did there. They raised this one and that one. This, it's kind of hard to keep track of the fools because they, they all look the same. So what you have to do is flame one, see which platform he raised, and then just flame the other one. It's, it's actually pretty easy. To keep. It doesn't take that much uh you don't have to put that much thought into it to, fi to figure out that particular puzzle. There are some fools that you have to think about uh, quite a bit and make sure that you get the timing right, but thankfully those are some pretty easy fools and uh, you don't have to worry about them too much, but anyways. So that's this is the boss uh, for this level. We won't bother with him right now. So many, yeah. Hey, most of the Nice job collecting so much stolen treasure, but beware, Spyro. Nasty's world is not the most friendly place you will find. Uh, so we'll go ahead and stay here for now, since we uh, we haven't cleared it, uh, cleared this level out yet. But you can just see. Is that a glint? Yeah. Crap. I knew. Uh, I knew I was gonna miss something. I usually miss uh, a couple of pieces, pieces of treasure over there, even though I said to uh, pay attention and be careful. I was, I was, so I was thinking about that section over there. But uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, you know, if you play the game like I do and you clear out all of the levels and everything, you, sh you shouldn't have any trouble with uh, getting into the Dreamweaver's world or uh, going to Nasty's world if you wanted to go ahead and, and skip ahead to those two levels. Uh, but you don't, if, you know, if you play the game like I do, then you wouldn't. But if you don't, if you, for whatever reason, you don't like the Beastmaker's world or the Dreamweaver's world, uh, I think you should have enough if you... If you were to skip the Beast Maker's world altogether, I will enter Dark Passages at the first level. But uh, if you bypassed Dream uh, Beast Maker's world and just went straight to Dream Weavers, I believe you should have enough to fight Nasty. But I'm not 100% sure. I usually don't. I usually have enough uh, treasure coming in here, so I don't. So I don't. I don't know for sure. Now you can see what the the fools do here. They make these uh, these these animals. Uh, big and small, they grow big with the uh, because it's dark, and they'll grow small when the light comes out. And you see what you have to do. Uh, all you have to do is just flame the fools. The light stays on for, I believe, until you walk away uh, or walk far enough out of a sec out of out of a section. But it may stay on. Oh, I guess they they come out again uh, after a period of time. So. Uh, that's good to uh, keep in mind if you're concerned about the uh, lights or anything like that. The enemies here can be quite frightening. But you should want the fools. I'd rather flame the fools. Now you're thinking. So that's uh, a, a tip, kind of kind of late, but you know, at least we, at least we got a tip. And I see those uh, the the bow wielding enemies. Do not are, are not affected by the uh, by the light, so you do have to be careful and pay attention to when you go into a room filled with them. The big the big dogs you can uh, hit any time. It's just the the armored turtles is the, the ones you can't hit. Uh, that you have to be be careful for. Even when they're small, you just have to be careful. You don't want you don't you don't want to run into them head on. Now uh, with the bow wielders, you do have to. Definitely pay attention, especially if there's a bunch of other creatures around them. Thank you for releasing me. And you don't want to run into them head on without taking out the smaller enemies first. They are they're not usually that accurate, so if you do happen to uh, decide not to uh, if you decide not to uh, attack them first, you shouldn't have any problems. And I know if I go in that room, I'm going to have problems, so I'm going to go ahead and fly back over here and uh, fill up on sparks again. It's pretty 
uh, pretty close by, so I don't have to worry about uh, it being a long distance to backtrack. But sad, I was gonna say, sadly, I wasn't gonna fill up sparks, but thankfully I did. It didn't look like it because it looked he looked green. Let's see. I think that's a uh, something that we can't even get to right now, so I won't worry about that just yet. And you do have to uh, pay attention to the enemy's placements as well. Uh, you know, those two dogs is definitely going to get me. Uh, no matter what. And you can just see how inaccurate the uh, bow wielders are. They, they, they're, unlike other enemies that shoot things at you, uh, their bullets don't uh, home in on you. And once they shoot, it's it's just like a regular arrow. It will it will go. You don't have to worry about where it, where it lands. Excuse me a second. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about where their arrows will land. You just uh, just want to pay attention. Make sure you don't run at them head on. We're still missing uh, quite a bit of treasure, 500 pieces, and we do have five dragons here. So we, we want to go into this this section down here. Let me see where they go. There we go. Uh, you, this is this is where you, this isn't. I guess this is how you get into here, or one of the ways you can get into here. Uh, but this will, I believe this may loop around so that you can get back to where you need to go, but I'm not 100% sure. That's where this leads. Uh, probably nowhere, yeah. I was gonna say. Somewhere I've already been. I don't know, I won't worry about going down there right, right now. Uh, but anyway, so, now running around with sparks is not as dangerous as you may think it would be, uh, as long as you don't run into any turtle, the the armor turtles head on. It's actually pr uh, pretty easy as long and as long as the dogs uh, stay small, you shouldn't have anything to worry about there either. It's just whenever the dogs get big, but you can see you can just see uh, different ways to. Where did mushroom go? There we go. Uh, you can see you can just see different ways to uh, bypass the turtles, so you don't have to. Uh, run at them head on. You know you can dive into them, uh, charge dive into them. You, there's different things you can do so, so, so that you don't have to uh, uh, worry about them. In like like a room like this, you want to bypass the turtles if you can. Try to uh, you know have the fool or hit the fool. And then take out the turtles as quickly as possible. And you see, they do it. They do come back pretty fast, so you do want to pay attention to that. There's quite a few enemies around here, and so if you're low on sparks, you know there's quite a uh, quite a few mushrooms around here as well. So you want to go ahead and fill up on those, especially since you're going after the turtles through here. The turtles. Uh, rocks that they shoot out are the same as the arrows. You don't have to worry about them. They don't uh, home in on you. So that makes them a little bit easier to deal with. It's just uh, you, 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 and I, but I don't think rolling out of the way would help uh, like it would with the arrows, but I'm not sure. I've never actually tried it before. And you can see the little dogs uh, once they're small that you don't have anything to worry about. They're actually very easy to dodge and all that. too worried about rolling off the side, so I didn't uh, worry worry about that. Now I probably should go ahead and fill up 
uh, fill up sparks since I was over there, and I don't think there's any way I can get back over there without uh, climbing up here and then flying back across. But I should be okay. Uh, they, they're not very good with uh, keeping a whole bunch of fodder around for you to uh, fill sparks back up with. But it's not it's not as bad as it seems, you know. It's um, still pretty. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about running out of sparks too often, you know. There are sections where you can fill sparks up if you if you need to. Thank you for releasing me. Two of those in one one go. Uh, and this is where we have to go next. And this, uh, this, uh, that other section that I had to fly down to get down to here, you can. Uh, this is where the majority of the level is. You know, yeah, or yeah, I guess you could kind of sp uh, split it in two. The levels, uh, you know, you have a, you have the, the first section of the level, and then you have the first half, and then you have the second half. That's uh, actually a, probably a better way to uh, look at it instead of. Uh, Okay, well, I could have swore they weren't they weren't that accurate. Now that's actually a good way to uh, look at it, you know, look at the level. And uh, I, I have forgotten to mention it, but enemy projectiles can hit other in, uh, other enemies and hurt them. But you just have to make make them hit uh, hit the other enemies. You know, it's, it's, it's not that easy to to do, to be honest. Sadly, there are no mushrooms around here, so we can't uh, fill up on sparks. But we should be okay, I think. Just uh, getting treasure is the, the biggest thing, you know. This because there is so much treasure here, it's a pain in the rear to get it all one one piece at a time. You have to walk slow and make sure that you can get it all and all that. Now, this should be the rest of the uh, treasure. So, no, what do you know? I missed a piece there. Uh, yeah, I was saying this should be the rest of the treasure. So we. Shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Yep, 500 pieces and uh, five dragons. So, and I'm, I may may have been wrong again. I think this this homeworld may be the mo have the most uh, dragons and treasure in it. I'm not I'm not sure about the dragons, but I know for sure uh, treasure. You know, 500 pieces of treasure. And I believe every level has consistently either. Yeah, except for except for the boss, uh, 300 to 500 pieces, of, uh, or 400 to 500 pieces of treasure everywhere, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I am, but I, I could be. I don't, I'm not, I don't remember 100% for sure. Uh, but anyway, so we'll go ahead and go through here and we'll go to the next level. Let's see, lofty castle. Is this the one I'm thinking of? Lofty Castle. No, I think it is. One of these levels uh, in here, I don't remember the, the name of it. No, this isn't it, but it's uh, pretty infamous for, uh, for you know, Inspiro for being the hardest level in the entire game. Uh, just be, uh, to get all, all the treasure for, just because of the... Well... I wouldn't say hardest level. I would definitely, I would still say that that's treetops, you know, without a doubt. But probably the second hardest level to get the treasure for, just because of what you have to do in it. And I'll talk about that once I get to the level. Exceed these norms, I got to do is just uh, flame their balloon, and they will they'll fall. I don't watch out for these little weird birds. What they they will do is they will circle. They will run around in a circle. Uh, they won't. They these won't attack. I'm not sure if there are some other birds. Uh, up ahead, it will attack you or not, but I know these those birds won't. I guess if they're sitting still, they won't hurt you. And uh, the biggest thing that we that we have to do now is to uh, free these fairies that are trapped in these uh, wooden cages. I got to do this stuff: flame the uh, flame the cages, and the and it, they will fall. And they want to be he careful here because you can't actually get caught uh, caught. A by the Norks balloon. Thankfully, I, got, I was pretty lucky and didn't uh, get knocked backwards. But you can get knocked backwards, so you do want to be very careful. And so what the fairies will do is they will uh, activate this whirlwind, and that will allow you to go 
go and go far further into the level. So, you know, he's just pretty much saying what I was saying, you know, uh, well, I guess I didn't say the fairies were on our side, but uh, it, it definitely uh, helps to, uh, it pays to help the uh, fairies, just because, like I said, they uh, they activate the whirlwinds for you. And there are some fairies here as well, so you do want to look around in this bottom section and uh, dodge all the era of the bow wielding or the bow wielders, and if you notice here, a red one, you don't see that, you don't see this too often, uh, uh, the red kind, I think it may only be in this, in this level, where you see actually the red ones, I'm not 100%, 100% sure though, so I'm, I, I may, and I may be wrong, uh, but I, but I know this is the first, first, uh, I guess home world, uh, where the, where those, the red ones appear. Now I believe there's um, three sets of fairies that you have to, uh, three sets of, uh, well, I guess nine fairies in total, but they're scattered around. Let me see. Uh, if I jump down there, I won't be able to get back up here, will I? Yeah, I guess I will, won't I? So. But I may not have to go over here just yet. Let me see what's over here first. This. I know this is a dead end, so it doesn't matter when I go over here, I don't think. Uh, so why not? I'll go ahead and uh, clear this out real quick. It, sh it won't take too long, and it's not really out of the way. Now, what you have to do is just uh, glide and uh, pop the Nork balloons and free the fairies, and it's not as easy as, as I made it seem, I actually got pretty lucky there, and was able to uh, do everything pretty seamlessly, but, let me see how many pieces of treasure, 400, uh, but it is actually pretty difficult, because it, the, the flame doesn't, you have to get the, the timing down for the flame just right, before you can, and this is the key for the, uh, the chest, I'll see if I can run back to it real quick. So I don't, I don't need to go this way yet, I don't think. Uh, I believe this supercharged section will take me down. Well, crap, I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, but, but the Norks, the fire button sometimes doesn't work, so you do have to... Oh, crap. Yeah, I was say it's uh, that other, other level all over again. Uh, uh, Treetops all over again. Uh... The, the, the flame button doesn't work quite accurately, you know, very ac accurately all the time, so you, so you want to try and uh, pay as much attention as possible uh, to the timing and to try to get the timing right for all of the, the Norwalks going up and down and everything. Uh, so I would, I would definitely suggest go ahead and grabbing the key from, uh, you know, behind the dragon. Of course, you, you want to do, do that anyway. You don't want to have to backtrack back through a a large portion of, of a level just to get a key, but uh, you you can go ahead and grab this key and you take the supercharger route because it will take you to that upper section and then you can just come down here and it's a lot easier and a lot more efficient than uh, what I was going to do. I was going to go ahead and go through the, and I'll, and I'll point it out here once I get to it, but I was going to go through the, where'd it go? Oh. Through the left, uh, the right section, instead of going left and going into the castle, I was going to go through here, and this would lead you to where I believe the level ends. If you went to this, went to the right, and then if you went to go to the left, that, that will give you a bunch. Uh, that will clear out a dead end section and give you a bunch of treasure and a dragon and everything. So, I definitely suggest go ahead and go left first, and then you can come right. Just save, uh, save a little bit of time in in the long run. Thank you for releasing me. You'll hear that a lot more often in uh, a lot of useless dragons. There, you know, most this late in the game, most of the tips have already been given. There's not a whole lot left to learn uh, outside.
drops out of just individual things for the for the different levels. And even then, there's there's not a whole lot to that. So it's there's really uh, really nothing else. You'll just hear, uh, see dragons complain a little bit more, or I guess be a little bit sarcastic or whatever to Spyro. So there's, uh, so if you don't care for that, you know you'll hate the last bit of the love about hate the last bit of the game. But uh, you do want you know just prepare yourself for it. Now you see what those uh, Norks do, they will hit you with their shields. I'm not sure if it's... Uh, I'm pretty sure if it if the, you just leave them, they will uh, they will hit you with their shields, so it's best to go, a go ahead and take them out as quickly as possible, of course. Uh, you, you have to worry about timing, you know, you can't always make, say, okay, well, I'm gonna hit this Nork, you know, whenever, you, you, you have to, because they, they do have... Uh, they do have the metal around them, and you can see where this takes you to another section. But we want to go ahead and come back here real quickly. Oh, okay, I guess that's just the bottomless pit. I thought that was the lower section of that. It's a good thing I didn't uh, jump off there. And you can see uh, that's the beginning portion of the level, and this is where the level ends over here. Uh, as a matter of fact, the end the end portal is up there, and that's that's the. Uh, the, the ferry platform that we need, uh, the one that's, that's dead right there. And now what these birds will do, they're small enough that you can uh, flame them and they are not uh, yeah, charging them and they won't hurt you, but I, I find it's easy just to go ahead and flame them. It's uh, especially around water and the, this edge here, you know, it's a little, little bit more safe. Uh, it's, well, I want to say it's a little bit more safe. It's a lot uh, safer than <laughs> charging around in that circle, you know. Of course, it's not as tight as some of the uh, some of these sections, like in the Magic Crafters world, but it's still you know something something you don't want to do if you don't have to. Uh, but anyways, like I was saying, this dead uh, whirlwind platform is where the fairies will be, and I don't have all of the gems. Oh, okay, good, I do. I thought I, I, thought I said uh, I had 389. Oh, that's good. So uh, you can just see uh, this. This level is not necessarily bad. It's just a pain because of all the the, the puzzles and the backtracking. There's not really that many puzzles, to be honest. It's just the you know if you don't go through a section right, you'll have to backtrack a little ways, and it's just uh, it it can get more aggravating than actual actually annoying. You know, you get to the end of the level and you find out, oh well, I've missed a. a bunch of treasure. Well, where did the treasure go? Well, you have to go through the entire level over again just to get to, say, the castle section. And that's just uh, some of the annoying things about that level. But anyway, so you can see what the, uh, you, know, you know, the enemies, I got I got another life because of the silver orbs. And sometimes you'll get a butterfly if Sparks is not uh, at, at full strength, so you do want to make sure if you're going after lives, to go ahead and make uh, make sure Sparks is full all the way. Don't, uh, see so that you don't potentially waste a silver orb on Sparks when you can just go around and get fodder for him anytime. Uh, but the Dreamweaver's, wor Dreamweaver's World is actually another, another good level. Uh, or I guess home world to uh, get To get the uh, to get lives for, and if you notice here, we cannot get through here. Uh, this this metal knight won't won't attack us, but the ones that are standing around, you see that it takes off their helmet and kind of uh, gets ready. To, you know, like wind up like they're going to hit you with it. Uh, you do want to be careful for those. And the purple fairy returns here, and with your super powered uh, flame breath, that's how you destroy the metal, just like the spiders in. The oh, which one was it? I I forget I forget which level that was in. Uh, high caves was it? I'm pretty sure that's where it was. High caves, but uh, you, you can visit the purple fairies as many times as you want to. And if you're trying to clear out a section like this, you do need to uh, visit her quite often. Uh, look around for any 
uh, knights that you may see, even uh, armor that's just sitting there. I will have treasure in it, so you do want to make sure that you look around for those types of things so that you can uh, use that to your, uh, you know, so that you can use the, uh, use the purple fairy to, you know, to your, to your advantage so that you don't waste it or have to go through a, a, a section over and over again. And you see there's a few knights here, uh, there's a purple fairy at the end of the lower road, if, if I was to follow that path all the way through to that castle that you can see to the right side, uh, there would be a purple fairy in there, but I don't believe, uh, she can reach the knights at the tail, or the knight at the, at the tail end here, and so it's just best if you go ahead and, uh, while, while you have her, just go ahead, or, you know, while you have this one, you just go ahead and clear, clear all that out. You don't have to go back for the treasure, you know, you can let the treasure sit there uh, for a, a moment and allow it to, uh, so, that, so that you can try to knock out all of the, all of the, uh, knights. Hey Spyro, old dragons know there's magic in the fairies, kiss. See what it can do to your power of flame. Let me see, uh, pretty close to this purple fairy, so I don't think I'll... Uh, waste, or I, I won't waste time going back to that one, because that, that's kind of like, uh, at the crossroads to where their, their power is, to where they're, they're efficient, uh, once you get, you know, once you get, once you get so far, thankfully I was, uh, you know, able to, uh, make that last a while, oh, crap, now you, you do want to, uh, pay attention because once it, even while you're still flashing, or uh, it's still flashing from your your, no your normal color to that uh, brighter purple, I think, or that may be like a really bright pink or a mixture of pink and red or something like that. Uh, because you do want to pay attention to that because there's a point where even while even though you're still flashing, you'll just lose your power altogether. And that can catch you off guard, especially if you don't have any sparks, or if you're low on sparks, uh, you do want to you know pay attention to that. Uh, I guess that could be just just red, couldn't it? Uh, but anyway, you, uh, you don't have to worry about fodder here. There's tons of it, uh, way more than you'll than you'll need, to be honest. So you don't have to worry about the fodder at all. You see, here's a supercharged platform, and this is that level that I was talking about is really uh, aggravating because not only because of all these knights and having to uh, deal with them, but because of the supercharge. There's a a pattern that you have to uh, follow to be able to get the uh, to be able to get the supercharge uh, sequence down right, and uh, like there's only there's only one way to do it. So you want to learn that, and that's a pain to learn it. It's uh, not really complicated, but you can just kind of see how hard it was to maneuver around in the. Uh, maneuver around in the hallway where the supercharge is, you know, you can just kind of tell how how hard it is trying to get, uh, get out through one of those doors, and that's, you have to follow this door that leads you to here, this is the door that you have to follow, uh, let me see, I think I'm missing some, I was going to say, I was missing something, uh, you have to get out through this door, and I'll go ahead and do that now, since I don't want to go through this route just yet. That's the route that leads us to the end of, end of the end of the level. So go ahead and follow that. And if you notice, you can hear a dragon. It's up on one of the lower sec the upper sections of this of this particular castle. We can't get to it yet, so you got it. Crap. went the wrong way. Uh, you, we can't get to this drag that dragon yet, so you just have to be patient and wait until you can uh, get up to it. So. No use uh, looking around through there. Let me see which door was it. This door, wrong way. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, trying to remember where the door is. Like I said, it is pretty difficult to uh, figure out the right pattern and everything to be able to get up, get up to the to there. Just got lost it. Alright, so you want to follow that up, jump off this, and then fly over to here, 
and this will uh, allow you to come up here. And this is that dragon that, that was in the. You've become a master of the supercharge. Great work. Now this is the dragon that you can hear from uh, down below in the supercharge area, and this is what uh, where that section leads to. Now you want to be careful because there's a wizard that will uh, activate all of these uh, suits of armor. Now I believe if you can kill the wizard fast enough, you may be able to bypass the uh, you may not uh, this is a golden fairy you see she uh, her kiss lasted longer and this particular power this uh, super flame breath power will last the entire level it will not go out unless you die or you leave the level in which case you know you can always come back into this room and uh, get it again and if, you, if you die you know if you uh, say if you have a checkpoint by that dragon you can always come back through here again. Uh, but uh, I lost my train of thought and I forgot what I was talking about. Let me think. Uh, crap, I don't think it was anything important. Well, now that we've cleared out this upper section, we can follow back down through here. And that will take us right down here where we need to go. Yeah, I can't believe I don't remember. Oh well, yeah, I guess I can. I do have a... Uh, if I lose my train of thought, I usually will forget uh, what I'm talking about. Oh, I, I know I know what I need to do. Crap. I need to go along that supercharged route again. I need to go after the uh, that it, the metal the metal crate that didn't or the metal chest that didn't have any uh, locks on it. Can't believe I forgot that. That's a pain, but you know it, it it is what it is. And now once you learn the supercharge route, it's not that difficult. Doing it for the first couple times is kind of difficult, you know, unless until you can get the hang of it exactly. You know, going through this section is always always a pain, no matter how many times you do it. Uh, the biggest part is trying to get the, the flying down just right, so that you can, uh, you know, get everything just right and just perfect, so that you can get up there every time. And that should be all the treasure. You have 500 pieces, and all. Oh, I didn't get all the dragons. Oh, I know, I know where the last dragon is. Right in here, the dragon that I uh, purposely forgot that, or didn't get. From. Here comes Patience, little one. You'll soon have the opportunity to battle the one who matters most, Nasty Nork. You may lose your. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to speak to say you may lose the, the fairy power with, when talking to a dragon. I I don't know. I've never. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever talked to a dragon with a. Uh, with this particular power, but you, with a regular Fairy's Kiss, you may lose the power, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I don't think you can mix them. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think... Really, I didn't think you could. But, you know, this, like I said, this lasts the entire... the entire level until you either... Well, I'm not 100% sure about dying. You know, I just kind of take, take that for granted. If you do die, you lose the, the Fairy's... The fairy's power, uh, but I but I may be wrong. You know I don't know for sure. And if you leave the level, but it's actually uh, nice to get early on if you if you can get it, if you can get it early on. Of course, you know you go through quite a bit of the level before you can get to it. Uh, but if you want to save all of those suits of armor, uh, especially some of the more inconvenient ones at the beginning, for for once you get the uh, Golden Fairy's power. That's not, that's actually not a bad idea. I, I just thought about that now uh, because it makes it a lot more simple, and you don't have to worry about. Oh uh, well, I wonder which fairies uh, will, you know, be where and uh, different things like that. You know, you have, all you have to do is just get the gold, uh, the Golden Fairy, and it's uh, a lot easier after that. Now these three uh, armored 
things, creatures. Uh, the the creature that's yeah, shooting the cannon will make them grow big and small very uh, very fast. You know, it's very rapid, so you want to pay attention. You know, always be looking. Uh, you know, whenever you can. And now we go here, a very weird, uh, definitely very, very weird level that appears to be in a volcano of some sort. But now this is where the fools will be um, most present. This level has the most fools of any other level in the entire game, and a lot more fool puzzles. And you see we're at a uh, crossroads here. You want to go ahead, ahead and go to the right real quick so that you don't have to backtrack a, a, a long ways. You don't have to worry about these enemies. The ones with the flowers, uh, all you have to do is just uh, flame them. I believe they're too big to charge. The little ones with the uh, metal armor on, of course, you have to charge those. You don't have to worry about there. There will be no big enemies with uh, with armor on, so you don't have to worry about uh, worry about that potential. You know that that problem. Thankfully, you know, this is hard enough without it. Let's see, 500 pieces of treasure. So I believe this is the home world that has the most treasure in it. Uh, you know, by far between all the levels, the dragons. Three, five, three, three, and two. So probably not. You know, the dragons don't seem to uh, be that uh, ha have that many dragons here. Now, now once you get to the to the end of the the path up there, you want to go ahead and backtrack so that you can come back here, and then head along this path because this uh, both of these paths will meet up to that that ending section. You just uh, if you if you don't go through this area, you'll uh, miss quite a bit. Uh, you want to be careful here because you can very easily, depending on the angle, fly off. Uh, you do want to pay attention and uh, you know get your uh, get the angle just right. Let me see. Do I gotta? have to fly over there, or maybe I could just gotta find that fool again and hit him. I'll try that and see if that works. Now, there are some of these platforms that you can stand on, and, uh, oh no, I, I don't guess so. Okay, well, I'll figure out another way in a, in a second. Uh, let's see. Come on. Still. Still not. Okay, neither of those. No, neither of these fools uh, raised that platform over there. Crap. This is definitely a pain having to uh, deal with two fools like this, especially once they run around in a circle. Of course, you can flame both pretty easily, but uh, it's hard to tell which fools will. Do which uh, which section, and that's something that you need to pay attention to to uh, to help to help yourself get you know uh, get through that column pretty uh, uh, efficiently and without having to do do too much. Now, of course, you have to flame both pools and have all three pillars up uh, so that you don't have to uh, so that you don't have to worry about the I don't know why, don't it, why does it drop me yeah, I don't know why it wasn't dropping me on that platform quite a bit of treasure in there Now I don't remember how to get across that that place over there. I'll backtrack here really quickly. I hate I hate to, but you know, especially because I'm right there by the boss. But this the, the the right section is definitely a lot easier, so you don't have to worry about that one all that often. And you see the problems with uh, charging into the fools. Okay, I guess it's. Maybe one of those fools at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the level, possibly. Thank you for releasing me. Like I said, you'll hear that uh, you'll you'll hear that a lot. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, you want to make sure that, you, that once you get to a dragon, whichever one it is, you know, if it's right beside the boss or that one there, you want to make sure that you can save the, uh, you know, get the checkpoint down, because if you die here, you have to, uh, before you can get to a dragon and you're, like, almost done with the, uh, with all of the enemies, you will, they will all come back, because you'll come right back to the beginning of the level, and you have to kill a lot of those enemies again. You may not have to kill every single one of them, but it, it just it just depends on whichever path you choose. But with you know it doesn't matter whichever path, there's still quite a bit of enemies or you know quite a few enemies around that you wanna uh, that you have to get rid of. So you do want to keep that in, keep that in mind while going through a section like that. So I guess all I'm supposed to do is just fly across. Yeah, I guess it's uh, enough. The drop rate isn't isn't that bad. Now this is the bad spot because there's going to be a lot of these uh, these creatures that you have to ah flame. Well, what you can do is just uh, stand on stand on their pillars and then get ready. You know, position yourself better so that you can uh, you know fly into them and flame them instead of just circle around like this. But this kind of gives you a better demonstrate, uh, you know, a better illustration of the drop rate, uh, you know, going against these pillars here, they kind of uh, show off, I guess, a little bit better than anything else we've seen so far, about the, the drop rate for the, uh, for the, uh, for the glide, but thankfully we went on, we, we went ahead and, uh, Saved it again, just you know, before flying across here. Well, I want to make sure we're going the right way, so don't waste too much time. Uh, but even then, you know, even if a, a platform looks like it can make it, you have to make sure that you get to the very edge of the of whatever land mass you're, land mass you're on. Uh. To make sure that you can get across to it, you know you can't fly. Uh, you know, you've seen what I did when I died. You know I was not quite close enough, so it was you know I had a, a a reason why I died. You know it wasn't just because of some game BS. It was it was supposed to happen because of the way the drop rate is. Any advice before this battle? Advice. A wise dragon once told. Alright, so you should have 325 pieces of treasure coming in here because the rest of the treasure will be from this uh, from this enemy. And you can see what he does. He will uh, he will throw boxes at us. Uh, if I believe if you're too far away from him, so you uh, you want to continuously be moving. Let me see. He may not. Or maybe it's just if you uh, corner him for the last time. Now he won't drop treasure uh, while you're chasing him around here, so you don't have to worry about that. I, I guess it is if you just uh, maybe at the start of the level and at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the level. Let's see if I get all the pieces of treasure. Crap! Really? Oh. Oh. Okay. And that should give me enough. Yes, great. Yeah, it scared me there for a second. Didn't think I had all the treasure, but uh, that's this level uh, done, or I guess the, the home world done and over with. Uh, like I said, I won't. I'm not going to be doing the, the flights right now. I'm going to save those for later. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the, the trivia for uh, this game, or right, for, for, the, for the levels that I've done so far. And we'll start with the uh, Dreamweaver's World, of course, since this is the first level that we did do. Let's see, we'll go to Dreamweaver's. Dreamweaver's is the fifth homeworld, and inspired by the dragon, beautiful floating platforms and castles make up this world, so gliding is a useful move in this homeworld. The dragons of this world believe that dreams can become a real, a re become real. A theme that is obviously shown in each level, you must free at least 50 dragons to access this level. Uh, 300 pieces of treasure, 3 dragons, uh, fodder is mushrooms. 
the core world is home to the elusive Dreamweavers, the creators of dreams and sworn enemies and nightmares. Living atop a series of floating islands above the clouds, the Dreamweavers have built elaborate castles and temples on the grassy knolls, as well as crystallized structures for resting, playing, and practicing their art. Many pools of water confusingly fall up instead of down, swirling in a circle where they collect the skies of plethora of colors consistently change into the clouds as they pass by sparkling funnels of air carry passengers to each island safely but watch out for the fools the dream weavers put up with them but the stupid little creatures love to act stupid and knock things or people over the sides of the floating islands yeah you do definitely want to be careful uh, when when dealing with the fools So the enemies are the male fools, the female fools, and the clock fools. So I guess the I'll show I'll see if I can find some enemies. I guess these big the big enemies would be the uh, the armored one would be the the female fools. The unarmored ones would be the male fools. I guess I'm not sure. I'm not, I'll see if I can pick. I'll fi figure that out real quick. Yeah, okay, so, uh, uh, the, the ones that grow big are the, uh, male fools, and then the armored ones are the female fools. I wouldn't say the enemies are clock fools, but I guess they can knock you off the level. This homeworld bears a slight resemblance to the level of Spyro, the Spyro, Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon, the Floating Islands, and may have inspired as well. Its concept also resembles Skylands in the Skylanders series. Okay. Uh, so I'll go ahead and go to you see Dark Passage. It is that's the next level, level 13 in the game. L the Dark Passage is a world which appears in the r in the realm Dreamweavers. The world features both the highest amount of gems in a realm 500 and the highest number of dragons in a realm 5. Let's see. Dark Passage is, is a maze of mountains with tunnels, caverns, and caves carved in their sides. The marble stone archways and floors are about the only beautiful, are, are the only beauty here. The inside of these eerie tunnels are usually pitch black, with scarcely placed lanterns. The magic here is almost suffocating for anything that steps into this sable night. Tunnels can become twisted or formed into something terrifying. The fools here have been charged with taking care of the tunnels, for they are immune to the darkness is power, but oftentimes they just run around and act like little fools. The central area is a giant pit with a large walkway spanning its distance. Don't fall off where the bottom is carved out and will deliver you all the way down into an endless abyss. Fools in this area hold torches when they torches lit the enemies, which are simple dogs and turtles are small. When the light goes out, they become, they turn into monstrous creatures. The dogs turn into to giant red creatures that will eat spiral in a similar manner to the plants in Misty Bog. Turtles grow large and spit out fireballs. So enemies, lamp fools, cupids, armored turtles, and demon dogs. Should you dark passage is one of the few realms where Spyro does not do his aerial backflip when he arrives. The realm's music is notable for being the heaviest of the music of the music tracks as it features very distinct, powerful guitar, chords, organ, and pounding drums. Because of this, the track had positive reception. Dark Passage shares its English name with a novel which was also ado adapted into a 1940s film, and one of the areas with purple water spiral is able to walk atop it. Okay. Now we'll go to uh, a lofty castle. Lofty castle is a world in the Dreamweaver's homeworld. A castle in midair, this world is filled with floating armor norks and fi fairies that cages. If you charge or flame the cages, they will break and the fairy will be freed. They will then start up a whirlwind for Spyro to use. For one piece of treasure, three dragons, and then the fodder is mushrooms, just like every single level here in the uh, Dreamweaver's world. Uh, as with all of the Dreamweaver world's lofty castle, is a, it's a gigantic, beautiful, beautifully carved white and gold monument floating atop various uh, lushly decorated levitating islands the spires and towers reach high into the red pink and blue sky filled with nearby orbiting planets the sheer color of this wondrous subworld is extravagant and aw is extravagant and awesome with various floating patches of 
land to skip along in the backwards, forwards, and sideways flowing rivers and pools. Fairies like to stay here while in the Dragon Realms and will always lend a helping hand to any lost visitors. The castle itself is beautiful with blue rooftops and gold lined walls. It holds plenty of rooms for the Dreamweavers to get their own beauty sleep in, as well as extra rooms for others. The pool is held in its courtyard with a raised platform in the middle, allowing for some neat swan dives. Enemies, Balloonist, Norks, Cupids, and Puffer Birds. Trivia Lofty Castle is the only realm that features a red gem machine box, however, there is only one. The music is a removed version of, an, uh, of another Stuart Copeland produced track entitled Bill is Dead, which is on the soundtrack of the 1960 or 1996 movie The Paul Bearer. Alright, so we'll go to Haunted Towers. Haunted Towers is a a realm in the Dreamweaver's world. It is considered the second hardest level in the in in the whole of the original Spiral of the Dragon trilogy. It features magical armor and knights, wizards who revive them, and a large house to use the supercharge. And there's a tall fairy in an orange dress hidden in the castle, and when she kisses you, the super fire breath is infinite until you leave the realm. 500 pieces of treasure, three dragons, is again mushrooms for fodder. The Haunted Towers subworld is actually another marvelous castle of Dreamweavers, who I'm sure by now you know just love castles. With blue, white, and gold stones to create their homes with, the Dreamweavers have turned Haunted Castle into just about the perfect castle among all castles in the world. The courtyard, if it could be called one, is more like a dump site for a bunch of steel forged knight armors that aren't so unoccupied as they used to be now. With the power of reanimate, re reanimate magic, the knight suits have now become living guardians of the castle and even give a, an adult dragon some problems in combat with archways spanning the length of the smaller islands orbiting the castle and with plenty of stairs and rooms inside the castle for many dragons, not to mention the occasional fairy kiss on the head. Awarding orders the spire for saving the fairy from the steel forge knight armor haunted towers is more like a comfortable getaway than a site for paranormal activity, though the bumps and strange noises in the castle and night beg to differ. Enemies, weather wizards, blue, haunted, tin soldiers, and Nork Norkadeers. I guess it's like grenadiers. Uh, trivia there is a point in this room where you can get hopelessly stuck if you supercharge into the room where the haunted tin soldier is guarding the trove of treasure and you do not kill him, he will block your every move, making it impossible to pass him unless you leave the room by pausing selecting exit level. Yeah, so you definitely want to be careful for that. So we'll go to the boss level uh, for this area. Uh, the boss is a Uh, the boss is a, well, I can't pronounce his name, uh, but his name is French for Jack, so we'll just call him Jack. Jack is a boss realm for the home, uh, Dreamweaver's home world, and, uh, yeah, because Jack is a large Jack in the box, the realm consists of a series of dark floating castles surrounded by orange pools of lava and patches of green of grass-covered land. Many of the enemies sit on pedestals. Other pedestals must be temporarily raised by attacking the pools in order to progress through the realm to Jack. 500, 500 pieces of treasure, two dragons. Uh, no fodder in this particular level. That's interesting. Enemies, uh, clock fools, Jack himself, armored horrors, and giant pansies. Okay, so that's all the uh, trivia and everything for all the levels I've done. So thank you for watching. The challenge of the video is how many fools did I hit uh, throughout my entire time in the Dreamweaver's home world. Thank you for watching. Next time we will uh, go into the uh, Nasty's world. So until then, later everyone.